We're going to begin, and Corey won't be here tonight also, so I'll be presiding, and Kelly will be... You. Be me. I'll be Corey, and Kelly will be me. Corey, Corey. Be here, so. The guy that thinks so I'm we're going to switch around here. Um, so I'm going to have two public hearings. Uh, the first one is on the, uh, the flood hazard areas, and the second one is on the uh, rezone of 151 and 153 Grand Street. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I also will frog, so we'll get through that. Um, these will not come up for a vote tonight. There is a separate uh, environmental quality resolution that we have to adopt uh, prior to that, which we don't have right now. So we'll do the public hearings tonight. We expect that these will be ready uh, for our next meeting in March. Okay? Just, just I don't, on, I don't just expect on it on one of them. Both of them? On both of them, correct. Wait. Yes. So is that connected to the, um, the bill? Is that connected to uh, our the the, I, the Grand Street one is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But there is a, we're, we're supposed to do a separate, uh, uh, make findings under the State Environmental Quality Review Act. So there's a separate resolution that we need to adopt before we can adopt the ordinance. Uh, and that resolution isn't ready for tonight. Yeah. But it will, we won't be ready for the next meeting. We'll be able to do it all next week. Okay. okay. And you're okay with that because it came out of committee and everything yeah, else. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So these should be ready for next week. Um, moving forward, so we will be doing that before the uh, public comment period. Then we'll move into public comment. You did receive meetings for the February 4th meeting, um, <clears throat> which we want to move for adoption. Were there any questions or issues on that? If not, we'll do that. <clears throat> on uh, the new items for <clears throat> local laws. Oh. <clears throat> I'm going to tonight. Um, <coughs> local Law B uh, by Mr. Hoey uh, relates to um, notice of meeting agendas. Uh, that will be an introduction and referral to the Council Operations Committee. Yeah, I don't need to. You don't. No, what? No sugar, no bread. You did the previous one. Okay. okay. Remember the one on minutes. Oh, four years. Um, the other local law Black is coffee. a whole. On ordinances held, uh, the only one that I have coming up, actually, I don't believe any of those will come up for tonight. Uh, which one? Yeah, I'm going to uh, hold on that one. Yeah. You're going to withdraw it? I was, but I'm going to hold on that for now. Okay. So, well, nothing happened. There was a meeting of the law committee for March 5th that was scheduled and had, had to be canceled because of quorum issues. And so that is going to be rescheduled. And some of the items on, on here were on that tonight, so that's a little piece on the agenda. But uh, that's, that meeting is going to be rescheduled. Oh, you both are Yeah. Um, on the uh, introduced resolutions, so here's where we have some action. The first one, uh, 5.219, is by Mr. Hoey. Uh, we, uh, all members are co-sponsors of this. Uh, and this relates to the case of uh, Kanemo Navarn. Um, and there was a revised version of that that I think you have hard copies here, or do you have hard copies? That was sent out. Uh, that was just a kind of a little bit of a tweak that was emailed out earlier. Uh, if you need to have a copy of that, um, I think Jared would have one. Jared and Michelle. Yeah. Okay. But and like I don't know if you saw the email I sent out. Yeah. Tom and I have been in touch with his legal team, and they just asked that we remove a little sure. language that they felt would not work in their favor when they present to the judge. So we removed that piece, and um, it's it's a minor change. But I did email it out this afternoon. Okay. So this will be passed. This will be in time, I guess, for there's a, uh, a court hearing coming up, and uh, <coughs> it will be available at that point also. <coughs> Excuse me. So that will be a pass. Um, the next resolution is uh, 622. This relates to the salary changes in the uh, treasurer's office. Um, 
And uh, let's see. Jenny, you want to move that? Yes. Since Judy's not here. Okay. So I'll have that. That'll be a pass also by Miss Farrell. <clears throat> um, I'll do the next one. Yeah, 722 is the Marcuselli A resolution by Mr. Igo. Uh, this relates to, actually, there was another part of this here. Um, something on Clinton Avenue. And yeah, Miss Scotland and, and, uh, and uh, Donk and also uh, Clinton Avenue to Madison. Oh, Pearl from Clinton to Madison. Is that in the third? Which one? Pearl from Clinton to Madison, or is yes. that that's third? Okay. Yes. So that will be this Mr. Igo and Miss Love. Okay. We'll be co No, Pearl, Pearl on the other side is. On the uh, so other side. yeah, Pearl from Clinton to Madison. Is that also no, coming? That's there. That's there. Okay. That's there. Johnson. All right. And which one is that? This is 722, so it'll be by Mr. Igo and Mr. Johnson. Okay? And this is just uh, allows us to get reimbursement for the work that's already been done. Um, 822 and 922 relate to uh, reappointments to the Community Police Review Board. That'll be by Council Member of Clears. And Mr. Kimbrough will move those on her behalf. And there is a uh, public safety meeting on those scheduled for next week. <clears throat> uh, 1022 is the resolution related to installment payments. Who wants to do that? Probably. You want? Okay, Joyce, why don't you take it? Since Judy's not here. That will be Miss Love. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then resolution 112219 relates to um, a salary adjustment. This relates to the Council 82 contract uh, in the police department for non sworn personnel. Um, that will be a pass, and I have Mr. Kimbrough carrying that. Okay? Then, if there are no questions on those resolutions, all of which all passes except. It all passes except for the two community police relation boards one. Um, the next one is uh, an MC uh, 122219. This is by Council Member Anani. And I think, is this the one here? This is it. All right, so that was emailed out earlier. And we're going to. This is just a resolution uh, supporting the city's request for capital city funding. And so that will be an introduction and a pass. Um, we should list all members as co-sponsors? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any questions on that? Yeah, it'll be a pass tonight. Okay. Okay. So that's <clears throat> then on the resolutions held, I don't have anything for tonight. Uh, and that was all I have on the agenda. There also is on your desk a list of a listing of commissioners of deeds. Um, they're mainly from the probation department, uh, but that's why the list is so long. Uh, but that that's on your uh, desk. Uh, are there any other questions on the agenda for tonight? Okay. Um, I also want to bring up one other issue. I did send out also a, uh, an inventory of reporting requirements to the council. Um, I did share this with the mayor's office also so that they're aware of it. Uh, and I'm going to be sending it out to department heads, et cetera, some of whom may not be aware of what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, but I'm, I, I can't tell you which of these we've gotten and not gotten. Some of them we have. Some of them probably are just we haven't. Uh, but I will be okay, sending. Well, Adam, no, no. Doing. Yeah, so I'll be sending this out uh, to everyone. I think it's the first time I really we've had a real good inventory of uh, all these reporting requirements. Tom. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah.
Right, there are 22, and I actually looked at not just what's in code, but also looked like in you know state law, um, some uh, you know the, the parking authority ones, for example, are part of a separate agreement. So I tried to pull in everything that was there uh, that belonged on this list, and there's quite a number. Now, who do you track for that? Was it spreadsheet or something? Yeah, um, we should as they come in. I, right now, I mean, if we were to try to figure out what we have gotten or not gotten, I think it'd be pretty hard. Uh, there are some that I. I off the top of my list, I know we have, but I don't know of everything that we've gotten here. Yeah, but moving forward, moving forward, we should have try to put together something like that, so we have a you know keep track of things and everything else. The other thing I want to touch base on is the parking authority. Um, so the parking authority is comprised of there are five members on the parking authority, appointed by the mayor, uh, subject to uh, confirmation by the council. Uh, each parking authority member serves for a five-year term with one term coming up each year. Uh, so that gives the council uh, one appointment that comes up every year for confirmation. That's how we exercise our oversight over that body. Parking authority is created under state law, so it's under state, um, it operates under state law as opposed to city code. I will tell you right now that all of the members of the parking authority are serving terms that have long since expired. Did you get a res or, uh Resignation letter from? Uh, Do you no. have a new resolution? I don't, but I have letters that we received, oh. uh, one of which appoints, um, and I have no problem with either appointment, uh, Jardine Jones uh, to fill uh, the un what is the unexpired term of Kevin O'Connor, who, who resigned. Um, of course, he was, his, the term he resigned from, he never was confirmed to continue the appointment in because he had long since expired. Uh, but this would fill, make that appointment in 2020. Also, uh, the mayor appoints the chair of the parking authority, which is also subject to council confirmation. And the, the second letter we received would appoint Jeff Sperry, who's a current member of the authority, all, also filling an expired term. He's vice chair, move him up. Uh, move him up to chair, etc. cetera. Um, so, now both of these letters also, I, I've asked them to uh, resubmit and correct them before we take them. Uh, they both in, say that the, uh, these are the letters to the appointees. Uh, the appointment is subject to approval of the Common Council, which must act on this appointment within 45 days of the filing of the letter with the city clerk. That 45-day requirement does not apply in all cases. It does not apply for the parking authority, which operates under state law. That 45-day requirement is in the city charter, and it has limited application only to department heads and only to the planning board and the zoning board. For example, the Historic Resources Commission does not have that requirement, uh, but it's only, very, only those uh, appointments that are specified in the city charter and where bodies carry, created under state law, uh, that does, is not applicable. So right now, I, we have received the letters. Um, I'm asked that they resubmit with the correct information before we take them. Once we do get that, well, they'll be referred to planning, uh, but also I've asked what the intent is as far as the appointments, or if they're going to give new appointments or reappointments for the existing members that have long since expired. So that's something we really need to follow up on. So with that 45 day, we don't act on it, it automatically goes in. For those, that are For those that are specified in the charter, correct. And this is, so if we don't act on it, it's going to be there, right? Uh, you, you can, a, a current, under public offices law, someone who is currently uh, serving on a board can continue to serve past the expiration of their term until a replacement is confirmed. So, for example, I think the two members of the Community Police Relations Board that we have tonight, uh, they are current members of that board. Uh, their terms, I think, had expired, uh, but they continue to serve um, since they're already on the board. Uh, if, it, if it's a new member, that new member cannot take office until they are actually confirmed. So any questions on that? Are there any other? Tom. I got a few things the um, With your list, your inventory, I was looking at, there's a thing in there, and I, I didn't print it out, and I should have, I apologize. But I thought I saw something about there should be like a five-year plan for the city. And I think the last time it was done was 12. So, so I think you're referring to the comprehensive plan, 20, 20, 
2030? 2030. Yeah, the, the comprehensive plan, and any co comprehensive plan does get a periodic review or update. So it, um, let's see, and I had it here. So the comprehensive plan, um, there's an annual review, and then there's a, uh, a five-year assessment, and then there's the 10-year uh, assess, 10-year update. So Our current comprehensive plan was adopted in 2012, uh, April 2nd, 2012. So the five-year assessment due date was April 2nd, 2017. Uh, so that would actually, because it's the planning board that adopts the comprehensive plan with the assistance of the planning department, so they are, the planning board would do that. I can't tell you whether or not that was done or not. I don't, it does not, okay. or that we did the annual, the annual reports to happen there either. So I don't know if um, that. And then the other thing I wanted to bring up, um, we had brought it up, I don't know, about a month or two ago, and Ginny and I had talked about it. This, uh, Living wage for has been updated. Yeah, and I think uh, because Kathy, you were yeah. chairing that committee. Yes, that committee is pretty much defunct right now. So, so it's something we should it's actually. Committee. Yeah, it's appointed by the mayor. Um, it's so confirmed. But I mean, there is a law on the books for it, though, right? Right, so the living wage is supposed to be updated annually and it is supposed to be included in contracts. I know it has come up in the case, and I saw the Solidarity newsletter recently, which referenced Mohawk. Mohawk yeah. But if Mohawk, if, if they have, do they currently have a collective, if they if they're also are engaged yeah, in collective bargaining, I don't think Jared that. Into it and he says it does fall under. Yeah, I, spoke, I looked into it, spoke with Marisa. They, they do? have a contract with the city and they also but reimburse they, the fire department over the threshold under our law okay. because our fire trucks follow them. Right to life-saving incidences. So are they, Advanced but aren't life. they involved in a collect, currently involved in a collective bargaining? Yes. So doesn't, wouldn't they then be exempt? Because there is an exemption for contracts or employees that are subject to collective bargaining. I don't know if there is, because with the crossing guards, they got a little bit of that. Well, that was before the, they were uh, unionized. Okay. For contract which the city entered into over a certain amount. Right. So I guess the bottom in the question is, is Mohawk currently subject to the living wage ordinance? It's not as black and white as one would just say. Right. Because we actually don't pay Mohawk. That's right. So it's but they not pay entirely us. clear. If we don't pay them, they get So Mohawk gets reimbursed. But they pay us, that's the thing, is the they fire department them. collects a large sum of money from them because we have advanced life support and we go to those calls and when we do so, they reimburse us because they're not providing that service themselves. So I think that's what catches them legally. I mean, the living wage statute says any contract is the over right. X or it says if the city's reimbursed. No, it says if the person or retention of fees over X amount. So. And they cross that threshold, yeah. Well, so how, so how would we proceed? So is the so cat is I mean technically the, the current living wage committee is in existence. So there is no living. So living wage committee hasn't been set. It hasn't. Well, it hasn't met, or it hasn't. So what do you, I mean. I guess the other part of the question is. Do it or not? That's the question. Is that something that I think the argument has been achieved? It's not as clear as yeah. that. But I, but I think aside. There's two issues though. 
Yeah, but aside from that, I think we have to just generally, that's, that's a side issue in a sense. We yeah. need to assess the current status of the law. I think it's been 10 and, years or Yeah. Right? And yeah. even like, you know, who updates the, the living wage, wage amount? Or, uh, who does? The committee. Yeah. That doesn't mean. But. Anita Thayer, Bill. Yeah, Anita Thayer, but Bill Bernie Rich, is no Bernie. longer participating. The fourth person never participated. So it would be Anita Thayer and myself. I think Anita yes. Thayer was wrapping up. Yeah. So we could probably, I think we should have, you know, because the mayor makes the appointments, uh, the council does they confirm. Don't. They, you don't serve uh, like terms. Um, so you serve basically at the mayor's pleasure, but you're confirmed by the council. So we should probably work with. Yeah, I, the mayor's office in terms of, you know, looking at reinvigorating that committee and getting new members on. Can I have one more thing? Sure. Um, I heard last night that in the, um, from a fire department person, that in public housing, if you lock yourself out of your apartment, they charge you $45 to let you back in. Okay. And what's happening is people is that come out, we call the fire department. Yeah, do you want a bigger piece? We can call the fire department, and they'll let it, and something like that pot on the stove, the house is going to break down, and they'll let you in for free. So I, I didn't write to the chief yet to find out, but I just wanted to bring it up. You know, if you want to pursue it, you try to Housing. Yeah. So why is it so high? I, I, I can check. But, you know, see why the fee says so high, but a staff member has to respond. This could be any t time of day or night, and a Kevin, staff was, member has to. I was sitting there at 45 Central Avenue mm -hmm. um, with one of the older women, and she got locked out. And uh, she just didn't know who to call. So I, I made the phone call for her. And they don't run out to make a key. There's already this key, key around. So I'm, I'm with him. Why do it take $45 for them to bring me another key? I mean, I granted. So I might got to bring it to you, but they're part of housing already. They're already on the payroll. So what is it to bring the, the person the key? Why is it so much? I, that pays uh, the overtime. Maybe. Yeah, but someone has to... This is, but so, this is during the daytime, too. I grant it during the overtime. Well, but most of the times they tell you to call, you have to call a locksmith, but I was there with her. Today, when you, when you rent a place, you get a key, is there... Is there a deposit on it? Like if I go to college, I lose my key in and I have to do it. Well, yeah, yeah, any other place would charge you for it. Just yeah. like, what I don't want to do is create a, a path for somebody to be irresponsible and not be held accountable. But you know, my question was uh, forty-five hours. Why is it? You know, like I, I would agree. You know, if it's at night, you know, in the AM, and someone has to come out of there, um, it should be a Yes. I'll charge for it like that, yeah. but I'm just... But you must have a office manager downstairs and you open that room. If like if it's during the daytime, you know, like, is it, is it, um, yeah. some type right. of understanding yeah. for that, that situation right. versus, you know, um, someone leaving their actual leaving their house to go answer a key, key right. call. Right. But it's an expensive yeah. thing bringing the fire. What I'll do is I'll write to the chief tomorrow. I want to get information. Somebody yeah. told me this. Is it true? I don't know. And I'll check on the cost of, of, of the key. I know those keys are the ones that you're not supposed to duplicate and you, you need a certain kind of blank and all that. And I don't know if we, if the housing authority contracts with a, a locksmith or they do it in house. That would determine the cost also. But I'll check and get all of that well, stuff. And I also wonder, I mean, if it's something where do they need a brand new key or do they just have a master key and they come unlock the door and let the person in? Because that would be yeah. just the cost of the person. Yeah. Like that right, right. That didn't make, it wouldn't make sense to charge them for that, right? No, if they lock the key in the key apartment. Yeah. They yeah. just yeah. like ran out in an auto lock. Yeah. But I will ask those questions. Okay. Um, I don't know why I locked out of the door. I had to wait for the. Anything else? <laughs> We're okay. Oh I do want to also express our appreciation to. Yes. 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 Well, everybody, got anything going on? Yes. Yeah. Everybody felt good? Yeah. Worked yeah. out? Yeah. Best yet. Yeah. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. It was, it yeah. was, I thought the singing was awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah.
Oh, yeah, she was killing it. Reverend Boyd Dexter is uh, a reverend at the church we belong to, so they were, they were kind of yeah, ordained together. Kind of went out of order. Yeah. 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 Our, and everything goes. Yeah. And then over or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, reverend Robinson, get to do the closing, everything went well? Yeah. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Hey. Okay, if there's nothing else. I know what, I remember why I did it.